Hi, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> this is Mary, and Linda's behind the camera this morning. Our phones are not cooperating at all, so we just want to apologize for being late, and it's really frustrating, Linda, because <laughs> she does not be no. late for nothing. If I'm late, you know something is yes, bad wrong. Right. I don't like it. First of all, happy birthday, Mary. Thank you so much. Everyone has been so kind. I've gotten more birthday wishes than I've ever gotten in my life. And I just, I haven't even been able to say thank you to all of them. But uh, let me tell you now, if I don't get to you, I really do appreciate it. And I read every one of them. Linda has just worked so hard to get me a birthday cake made. It's just beautiful. And um, we're going to start telling uh, about Daddy's, a little bit about Daddy's story this morning. And Linda will be on there too. It's just we may have to switch the phone. <laughs> First of all, um... Uh, on the uh, cookbooks and aprons, um, I can't do it. No, <laughs> that's okay. Y'all, y'all, y'all can hear me. You don't have to see me. So the uh, inventory is updated um, on our website, pinkymousecakes.com. If you want an apron, there's two different colors. There's a pink, uh, there's a beige and a white. We're trying to get some pink ones, but right now all we have is beige and white. And we don't have a picture of them, but as soon as we get them, we will post. Um, we also uh, have updated the cookbook. So uh, even if you've told us you want one, right, Mary? They, yes. They can go in and order one. Yes. Uh, don't pay any attention to... Uh, we have got hundreds of people saying you want a cookbook. And I have posted on there and said we will let you know how and when to order. Well, I'm telling you now that... That I'm not personally contacting you again to tell you this. I'm telling you now on the video to go in and call that number, 903-235-2304. Is it 4804? I thought it was 2804. 4804. It's my 48. 4804. Yeah. I'm sorry. 903-235-4804. Uh, and, and leave a message on the phone how many cookbooks and, or aprons that you need with your telephone number. We prefer you to go to the website, to PayPal, because that that is if you want to purchase it on that. But if you're sending a check, call this number. Yes, yes. We're not, we're not taking all the orders on the phone because we, we're just keeping it separate. If you're paying for it up front on PayPal, then you're, ca you're counted. If you're sending a check, that's when you leave your name and telephone number on the uh, this telephone number. And y'all pray for us so we can get this technology <laughs> stuff figured out. <laughs> I am not a stupid person, but this is really a stump to me. Anyway, we're, so... We're going to get it done. Yeah. Just bear with us. Okay, so Mary's going to... We're going to be telling about our dad today. Uh, first, I'm going to tell you that uh, daddy was a generous person. That he was all he always uh, was just. That's why Mama said it. He would not give away what he did what did not belong to him. He was un he was sure he would pay for his truck, which he bought later on. He believed that if uh, he worked a lot in the fields and but when he got sick, he had uh, he had to sell his trucks then. But he believed that we ate and drank this month what he earned last month. Not what he was going to earn earn for that next month. Yeah, in other was, words, he always stayed a month of always, always yes. of what um, what we we live by the month the money that he made the last month, not what he was making this month. And I think that's where a lot of young thinking about the next day or the next month. And uh, another way, uh, she just she said over and over. Uh, titling titling him as a uh, true gentleman and polite. And um, so then um, uh, he seen uh, uh, Daddy, uh, another thing she, uh, Mother said about Daddy was that he was, uh, all his labor is honest. All labor that is honest is honorable. And she believed that, that that's the way he looked at his labor. And what he meant was, was it didn't matter what he had to do to support his family. If it was... Uh, working um, in a little wood chip factory, which he did, yes. and I may be skipping ahead of you, That's Mary, okay. but um, okay. this is after he sold his trucks and he started looking for work, and 
um, he worked at DeWitt's he worked, that factory, was the last job. but that was that the last, was the last job, job he, he had. had before he went to the VA. There was a little uh, wood chip that you used to on your grill uh, to, to smoke um, uh, to smoke like meats and stuff. And uh, uh, Engel Kings uh, owned it. It was down down by Long Star at the railroad track in Nacogdoches. Mm -hmm. And uh, he went every day. Daddy couldn't stand not to work. He went every day for a week. And every day they'd say, we're not hiring, Cecil. We're not hiring. So one day he walked in and he asked him, you know, was they hiring? And they said no. So you know what Daddy did? He just went in there and started He sure the did. He sure did. And they hired him on the spot. <laughs> That's right. He sure so did. So he was determined. And we, we all get our... Um, are working on us from mama and daddy because they believed in hard work and they believed in paying your own way that's right and dr taylor um that was our our doctor and uh mother said that dr taylor in nacogdoches told cecil and i one day in his office cecil i'd rather sit here and talk to you than i had all those people who stand on the streets in nacogdoches and and doesn't care one way or the other whether they work or not and uh, and then Dr. Taylor told him, he said, it's smart people like you, Cecil, uh, who has problems with dealing with things. And because he was, my dad was having problems dealing with his past, kind of the VA. I mean, on kind of the war. War, yeah. And he said that he was just uh, that he respected Cecil so much, and that was our family physician. And um, uh, and they said Cecil thought the first step towards greatness was to be honest he was on probably he was probably right mother said he always gave people good measure heaped up and running over and in his produce in his produce dealings he raised vegetables and crops and, and water always gave always gave more than what they actually paid for and uh she said that back then many people bought groceries on credit but cecil thought of uh uh, bought a few bills on groceries on credit, but not much. He always paid cash for whatever we had. And Mary, um, uh, I, I don't know if we've mentioned this on on our uh, shows here, but um, and I know you read something earlier this morning about uh, Mama remembering not rem uh, that Daddy never was without money. Mama said yes. that she did never remember right Daddy here. without money. Right here, it is. and uh, he always carried. Um, a hundred dollar bill in his wallet. Yes, he did. Always carried a hundred dollar bill. And, you know, this was in 50s, 60s. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he got sick in 59. Right. And so this was back years and years ago, and a hundred dollars was a lot of money. Right. And he always had this. Right. And our cousins, remember, they yes, told us one yes, time I, yes. that Randy, Randy Lee Ward yes, he told did. us that he always remembered Uncle Cecil having a hundred dollar bill in his pocket as a little child. Yes, yes. And to this day, Randy, he yes. said, he said then, he said, when I grow up, I'm going to carry a hundred dollar bill in my and pocket. And he does. And he, he does. does to yeah. This day. Yeah. Made a big impression. Yeah, it did. Him. Yes, it did. Uh, the, I was going to let you read that. Okay, so um, uh, you said you've already read this that he was a generous person. Um, also. Um, uh, when she wrote this book for, for their grandchildren, she titled it A True, and she's got a gentleman, a gentleman here in one word, but in that book, she put two words. She titled it A True Gentle Man. Yes. Uh, and he, he really was. Daddy was not easily provoked. No, he, I mean, he was he slow was to not anger. Easily yeah. Provoked. He, right. he didn't even discipline us. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> and, and I remember one time, Daddy. Uh, Pulled off his belt. Yeah. Whip Edward and his pants fell off. Yeah. <laughs> and we laughed, so it was a big joke because he never, he, ne he never, he never, yeah. Us. He yeah. never did. Um, but um, she, she said that um, uh, he was polite. He did you already say that he never talked down to people? Uh, I didn't say that. Huh? Um, Mama said he never talked down to nobody. He was not greedy. Daddy was a very, very generous person. Um, he peddled watermelons through different neighborhoods in Nacogdoches, Nacogdoches County. And I've heard Mama say many times when the ice cream truck would come mm -hmm. around in the neighborhood and he'd see little kids standing out to the side that didn't have money.
to go right. buy an ice cream, and he would stop his truck yes. and get out and go give those yes, kids money did. so they could buy ice Anyone cream. Anyone that, that he felt was underprivileged, yes. he would, like when he was fishing, Linda, remember he would catch these big old fish, and he, she said that the yellow catfish was the best tasting. He would come home and dress it, and he would take it to some people that, were, that he knew was in need of food, and he'd get that he fish them to them. The yes, yes, he would. Um, and something else that um, uh, I've always thought that this was really a good trait of Daddy. Um, he never, it, he didn't borrow money much, but our house was paid for. We never right. had a mortgage right. in our life, right. but because um, he built it. But um, I, if he borrowed money, he went to a bank. He never borrowed money from a relative. He yeah. didn't, he didn't feel no. like that was right, and he never borrowed money yeah. from a, a, a relative. Um, do you want me to tell about the Yes, the yes, check? yes, yeah. You go ahead and um, tell that. So when Daddy was discharged from the uh, Army, uh, he was um, he was on, the ship that he was on was torpedoed, and he right. lost his hearing. And uh, then when he was, he was stationed in New Caledonia, and I'm not reading this, I'm just telling this from, um, from our story, but um, it was, there was bombing all around him, and he had lost his hearing. And so when he got home, he was discharged with a 30% disability, and um, he got a check for $55 right, a month, right. is what he got. He was 30, didn't you say 30%? 30% and disability. He got a $55 yeah. VA check every month, and many times he would tell mama that he didn't want the check. That uh, So one month, actually I think he did this twice, he sent the check back. And right. This is, yeah. you have to remember, he didn't have work. Yeah, you know, right, right. We, we didn't, we never went for food or, or anything like that. We never uh, went hungry. I don't even know if they had, had I don't even know if they had things back then or not, whether you, you know, like they have nowadays, where you can go uh, food pantries and, uh, no, I, I don't we, think they, if they did, Daddy would yeah, went to it. Yeah, <laughs> that's but, true. <laughs> uh, I mean, people raised all yeah, the we, yeah, we yeah, eat and, yeah. Uh, but uh, we um, just worked, we just worked we for did. our food. Uh, we had a post office box. It was post office box yep, 11. Yep, I remember that. And uh, the Veterans Administration sent the checks back. Mm -hmm. And Daddy had sent them back, and he sent them back. And it was very hard for him to accept money from Yeah, it was. it was. Very, very hard. It was. Our brothers and Mary and I get that honest. We, yeah. If we earn money, um, we, um, we, I mean, if we have money, we want to earn it. We don't, right. we don't want handouts. And, um all this stuff that we do on our live shows, we buy this food ourselves. You know, we don't have a staff. Yeah. Uh, Mary's daughters help us uh, a little bit, and uh, Mike's helped us with some heavy lifting. But uh, we do this ourselves, yeah, Mary right. and I do. Well, um, we, um, I think we're going to... Uh, jump off of here and uh we, we got kind of late uh, late start this morning so we are so sorry about that yeah we're we'll just uh we've we've got the the arm the setup for our camera and everything we thought we was going to really have it perfect this morning <laughs> because we got all the equipment that we're supposed to have to keep this camera still and all that and then the phone would not connect it just wouldn't it wouldn't do right so we just uh, kind of a little bit off schedule and, and off of our routine this morning. But we're going to be, gonna be back on live, and we're going to work with this till we get it fixed. We will be back on at 11. And we're making chicken pot pie uh, for Mary's birthday, and we're going to have cake and some sweet tea if I can get it made. <laughs> <laughs> Bless so her heart. She's back. worked so hard this morning. She's worked so hard on my birthday and everything, oh, and she does a lot. And I do apologize for my arm moving sometimes holding this camera, but that's just, uh, um, I know it's not fun to watch when my hand is moving. But we've got the, all the equipment to hold it, but it, we, we're going to get this fixed before our 11 o'clock live. Thank you all for your patience, and please join us again at 11, and we are going to do our best to be on time. Right. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. Bye-bye.